Let's bring in University of Ottawa epidemiologist Raywat Dianandan. Uh, what a difference a day makes. 261 cases in this city, almost 100 uh, variants of concern. Uh, it appears that the third wave is really rearing its ugly head here in Manitoba. As we knew that it would. Uh, this is no joke. Um, I don't know what to say anymore except this was predicted and we have to do what we have to do. We have to close things down. We have to vaccinate at scale. We have to reduce our contacts. That's the only way forward. I was filling in last night for Charles Adler, spoke with an emergency room doctor from Toronto who said the look on people's faces when you tell them in Toronto they're being transferred because there's not enough ICU beds in Toronto, they're being transferred to Kingston. Then a local doctor here saying uh, two, three weeks from now, it's going to be at our worst. And the expectation could be, Ray, what? Worse than the second wave here in Manitoba. Oh, the third wave definitely will be worse than the second wave. There's no question about that. Um, and the waves are driven by different things. The first wave was driven by a large number of cases. The second wave is driven by deaths. And this wave is driven by the variants and by ICU capacity overflow. That's where we've got to focus our attention now is on maintaining the health care system. We never had capacity that much to begin with. But now that is being you know, shown to be the case with this emergency. There is no way to build capacity in short order. There's no I, way to do so. And I'm hearing buzz from my sources that the lockdown uh, could possibly include businesses shutting down, uh, schools shutting down, essentially where we were this time last year. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Uh, the difference is now there's an exit strategy. You buy time to vaccinate, whereas before you bought time not knowing what you're buying time for. So that should really quell some of the opposition to this process. All we got to do is stay put for a couple of months at the most to get vaccines into arms and the crisis mostly goes away. It's, and it looks like it's working. It's worked in England. It's worked in Israel. It's working in parts of the USA. It might be working in Ontario. The new modeling suggests we may be approaching a peak now. So this is the way forward. And I'm wondering, you're talking about this is buying time until we get shots into arms. We know that um, the cases from India, 314,000 cases in one day. We know that the variant of concern first identified in that country has been shown uh, uh, to, to be in at least two Canadian provinces. And as a result, um, Covishield, which is made in India, is going to be delayed. So vaccine is an issue. Um, do we really need these shots to come from the United States that they're not using anyway? That would be nice. It would be nice we need to get shots from anywhere we can get them. We can't rely on one source. This is where the federal government did a really good thing in sourcing a variety of manufacturers and vaccine types a year ago. So maybe that's going to pay dividends now. We have sources coming from India, from Europe, and from the USA. I don't know which one's going to pan out. But um, the USA will have excess doses very soon, and I'm hoping those come this way. Are you seeing any research now on, on mixing and matching vaccine? Um, simply, we're getting into a position where they say any shot that's available is a good shot. Um, we have seen the numbers in Manitoba of the people that have been infected with COVID after getting one shot versus after having two. And it's pretty dramatic. No deaths involving people that have had the second shot and dramatically lower case numbers amongst people. So really, we need not only one shot, but two shots into arms. So the question about the heterologous mixing uh, of vaccine types, the science says it should work. Not only should it work, it should work maybe better than having the same type. So that's being trialed in a variety of places, especially in the UK. I haven't seen any preliminary data but whispers is that it, it should actually work really, really well. So I'm not panicked on that front. I think we'll find out very soon that get any kind of second dose you can. And by the way, there's no danger in getting a third dose. There's no downside to that either. So um, the panic should not be on that front. And I think in a couple of months we're going to be in a glut of vaccine, knock on wood. I hope that's the case. So uh, just be ready to roll up your sleeves and accept it. That will be the next big battle, combating vaccine hesitancy. Ray Watt, about 30 seconds left, 261 new cases today. Do the epidemiology here for us. What can we expect in the days to come here? You can expect... Uh, ICU usage to increase. Now, the case fatality rate is probably less than 1% now because of vaccination. So the death rate might not rise as much as it did in the second wave. Your crisis is in ICU usage. 
Ray White, Dion Andin, joining us live here on 680 CJOB. He's an epidemiologist from the University of Ottawa.